guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today we're gonna be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. A lot of news to discuss. Firstly, Erling Haaland, Real Madrid have dropped out of the race for him this summer. They told him stay in Dortmund one more season and we'll come for you next summer. But he wants to leave now and Barcelona are gonna be there. They wanna sign a top striker and Juan Laporta is dreaming about Erling Haaland. If they can't get Erling Haaland, Alexander Isaac is the backup option. So with all the money going towards a top striker, the club still need to strengthen the squad, but by signing low cost and free ages in the midfield and the defense. Firstly, in the midfield, Franck Kesse talks have begun. Apparently, we have an agreement with him as well. But right now, we are talking with Franck Kesse. Brozovic won't happen anymore. But Yuri Tielemann said to leave Leicester City as well. He could become a free agent soon. So keep your eyes on that. But right now, Franck Kesse is definitely leading the race in the midfield. In the defense, Aspen Laqueta is the priority. He played very well in the Club World Cup the other day and Barcelona want to sign him on a free agent deal as soon as possible. But apparently Chelsea have an option to extend his contract without Aspen Laqueta's decision. And of course, left back is a priority as well. Jose Gaia is the main target, but Marcus Alonso is the backup option. And lastly, a contract renewal update on Sergio Roberto. Apparently the club right now have zero interest in renewing his contract, but they will renew his contract only on the club's turn, which is of course a two year deal and a 50% wage reduction. It is now up to Roberto whether or not he'll stay at the club, and renew his contract or leave in the summer as a free agent. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes on this video. It'd be very much appreciated. And also make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already and let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. Of course, the first pair we have to discuss is about Erling Holland and the biggest news around Holland is that Borussia Dortmund's top journalist came out saying that Real Madrid have informed Erling Haaland they will not be able to sign him now and prefer to wait until next summer in June 2023. Haaland hasn't made a decision yet on whether he's going to be leaving Borussia Dortmund this summer or not. Real Madrid is his favorite destination. Now, of course, with this being you know, the top reliable journalist in Borussia Dortmund, that last line kind of hurts a bit, but Apparently now Real Madrid cannot afford and don't want to go for Erling Haaland now because their entire focus is bringing in Kylian Mbappe in the summer on a free deal. But there is still hope for Barcelona. Samuel Marsden and Moses Malone from ESPN came out saying that Barcelona will go all out for Erling Haaland and sign low cost defenders and midfielders. They know that the competition will be fierce but Laporta is determined to sign him. Other options will be explored if they miss out on Haaland. So again, as we all know, all the money that we have will be going towards Erling Haaland and if we can't get him the money will be used elsewhere. ESPN also came out saying that Barcelona hope to announce a sponsorship deal with Spotify in the coming days. Several players are also set to leave in the summer. These factors will help raise the funds for the summer for a top striker which is the priority. So again we're hearing also that Alexander Isaac is the backup option for Erling Haaland. No matter what the club want to bring in a top striker this summer and the dream is Erling Haaland. The question is can we do it again? If we have the money we get top four and are playing in the Champions League next season, I think we have a good chance. But only time will tell. First, Erling Haaland has decided to leave Borussia Dortmund or not this summer, and then we can just start discussing. But again, for this summer, most likely at the moment, Real Madrid are out of the race for Erling Haaland. Now, with all the money this summer going towards a top striker, we still have to strengthen the squad, so we're going to have to look at low cost and free center backs and midfielders as well. Firstly, as center back, the main priority, of course, is Aspilicueta. Samuel Marzin and Moses Malor from ESPN came out saying that Barcelona are optimistic about agreeing a deal in the coming months to sign Cesar Aspilicueta as a free agent in the summer. Now, Chelsea, who played in, this, in the Club World Cup a few days ago against Palmeiras, they won an extra time. I watched that game. Aspilicueta is a beast. I think for a year or two, he can definitely do a job at Barcelona, but, Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Chelsea have an option to unilaterally extend Cesar Aspilicueta's contract for two more seasons. The player would be delighted to join Barcelona next summer and for this reason, he wants to meet with Chelsea to unblock the situation. So out of nowhere, Chelsea have an option to extend his contract Aspilicueta for two more seasons without Aspilicueta's approval or denial. I mean, this came out of absolutely nowhere. So if this is the case, 100% he won't be coming to Barcelona in the summer. But of course, Aspilicueta wants to have a meeting with Chelsea. Apparently, the meeting is supposed to be happening this week at some point to discuss his future with Chelsea. 
we'll wait and see if this is true though Aspera is not coming to Barcelona but again I'll say it before and I'll say it again if he is a free agent this summer I think he will be joining Barcelona now along with a center back the club are also looking at left backs as well of course Jordi Alba needs some competition Samuel Marsden and Moses Malorin from ESPN came out saying that Jose Gaia remains Barcelona's top target to provide competition for Jordi Alba at left back Chelsea's Marcus Alonso is another option as well Again, with Alonso, if he's like a last resort, then okay. But Jose Guy for me is the absolute, you know, as the absolute dream. The problem is, will he renew his contract with Valencia from now until the summer? I'm not quite too sure. But you might be wondering, what about Xavi? What does he want at left back? He wants what well, he wanted. Theo Hernandez, having been given from AES, of course, best friends with Chabi in the media. He's come out saying that not Jose Gaia, not Grimaldo, or not Tagnifico, but Theo Hernandez was the chosen left back by Chabi and his staff to compete with Jordi Alba, but AC Milan wanted at least 50 million euros to make the deal complicated. Also, the players demanded high salary as well. In the end, he has now renewed his contract with AC Milan until June 2026 and will not be leaving this summer. So apparently, Chabi wanted Theo Hernandez his number one option but of course he would take Jose Gaia, Grimaldo or Tagalifico. We'll wait and see what the club decide on right now but Marcus Alonso is you know an option. Jose Gaia is the priority. Now along with defenders the club are also looking at midfielders as well but midfielders are not the priority. They're looking at you know really really low cost or free agent midfielders and one of those names that have come up over the past 24 hours is Yuri Tielemans from Leicester. Romano came out saying that Yuri Tielemans has decided to not renew his contract with Leicester City. We will decide the price tag very soon for him and there's a lot of interest from England and Spain right now it's an open race nothing concrete yet keep your eyes on Tillemans I think if he's a free agent come you know next summer Barcelona will be all over him but of course this summer he will be available for a cut price so again keep your eyes on him he has been with Barcelona in the past and again as a free agent I think Barcelona will be all over him but the midfielder that Barcelona are in talks with and are very close to reaching an agreement with is Franck Kesse from AC Milan Firstly, coming in from ESPN, they've come out saying initial talks have taken place between Barcelona and Franck Kesse, who was out of contract in the summer, although the deal is proven to be difficult. Other midfield options are also on the table. Also, Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Franck Kesse would prefer a move to Barcelona over other interested clubs like PSG and Liverpool. Barcelona have been following him since a long time and view him as a possible replacement for Sergio Busquets. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona are currently negotiating with Franck Kesse, who would prefer a move to Barcelona over PSG or Liverpool. In their last match against Lazio, Kesse was whistled by the fans but later turned out into applause following his good performance. And lastly, Matteo Morita from Sky Sports came out saying that Barcelona plans to speak with Franck Kesse's representatives in the coming weeks and will try to advance the deal. Premier League clubs are also interested, but the player really wants to play for Barcelona. Whew. I mean, again, free agent, I'll take him. It can't go wrong. If it goes wrong, you can sell him. If it you know, goes right, he stays, right? Apparently in Italy, Tutu Mercado, not too reliable, but sometimes they get stuff right. They're saying that Barcelona right now have already reached an verbal agreement with Kesse to sign a pre-contract agreement with Barcelona. We'll wait and see. I think right now talks are definitely happening. I think Barcelona are interested in him as a free agent, of course. Coming into the team, you know, he look, you know, for example, he could come in and replace Ricky Puch. Of course, we need a boost gets replacement. Is Kesse that profile? I'm not quite too sure. But again, free agent, it can go wrong. So keep your eyes on Kesse. Right now, Barcelona are in talks with him to sign him as a free agent in the summer. Now, along with the midfielder that is not the priority, Barcelona are also in the market for a backup goalkeeper from Mark Andre Ter Stegen. And Mundo Portivo came out saying that Barcelona are tracking the market for a goalkeeper. And there are several names on the table right Right now in case it's necessary to sign a new goalkeeper in the summer those names are Bonu from Sevilla, Mesle from Leeds United, Dragowski from Florentina, Lafont from whatever French league club he plays for and Van der Vogt from Genk I mean these are just completely random names I don't think any of them will come to Barcelona I think most likely it'll be Inaki Pena as the backup goalkeeper next season or we could go for a really cheap option like Dmitrievski from Rio Vallecano. All these names would cost a lot of money. Lafont, highly rated. Bonu, you know, top four Sevilla. They're not going to sell to us cheap. Meslier, very highly rated. These goalkeepers will be expensive, but again, the club are tracking the market just in case. I think right now their plan is to have Inaki Pena as a backup next season with, of course, the imminent departure 
departure of Neto in the summer. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, guess who? It's Neto. Mundo Deportivo came out saying that Neto's continuation next season is unlikely. He wants to leave and Barcelona want to get rid of his salary and it's too much for a backup goalkeeper. But his high salary makes it difficult for clubs to sign him. He isn't in favor of reducing his wages either. So apparently, Neto wants to leave on a free deal. But Barcelona wants some money to pay back those wages we've been paying for. But he does not want to take a wage reduction to make that exit easier. Do I blame him? No, he does not even play the Cobo do Rey. I, I have no problems with Neto doing this because of course he's in you know the right situation. You look at Roberto and Dembele, they play a lot. They should reduce their wages. But Neto, you know what? He says on the bench every single week, doesn't even play the cup games. I don't blame him. So we'll wait and see. I think Neto 100% is leaving this summer. The question is how? Will it be a free deal? Will we get some money? We'll have to wait and see what happens. But of course, the backup could be Inaki Pena. When Deportivo came out saying that Inaki Pena went alone to Galatasaray with the idea of returning to Barcelona next season. It is an option for the club that Inaki Pena stays and challenges Ter Stegen as that backup. But his contract ends in June 2023, which can be extended by, of course, one year automatically. So again, Inaki Pena right now most likely will be the backup goalkeeper next season. Is he up for the task? We'll have to wait and see on his loan right now with Galatasaray. And of course, it would save Barcelona quite Quite a bit of money as well again we'll wait and see no final decision has been made quite yet now a player who could return to barcelona in the summers of course our low knee player at wolves francesco trincao we all thought that wolves were gonna buy him but now looks like it's different the athletic in the uk are reporting that adama Traore being purchased after his loan seems certain but trincao's future at wolves looks far less certain so apparently England sources are saying that Trincao will leave and go back to Barcelona in the summer, but Barcelona will pay 30 million euros for Adama Traore. That's not going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. It will be a swap deal. Jorge Mendes will work his magic. Of course, he owns, you know, part of Wolves. He's ages of Trincao and Adama Traore. He'll do us a favor. If anything, if Adama's going to stay, it will involve Trincao in some shape or form. I cannot see the club paying 30 million euros for him, but of course, right now, he's playing well. Two games, two assists. Basically, two man the matches as well. We'll wait and see, but right now, apparently, according to reports, Wolves are not considering buying Trincao. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, and only on the contract renewal of Sergi Roberto. It's looking quite intense right now. Firstly, coming in from Cope, they've come out saying zero interest. This is how Sergi Roberto's entourage defines Barcelona's desire to extend his contract. They are still waiting for a call from Mateo Aleman for a meeting, almost without hope at the moment my god sport also came out saying that chavi wants to continue counting on Ceci roberto but as long as he renews on the club's terms again same stuff we're hearing right now barcelona are not interested in roberto's you know renewal unless he comes back and says look i'll sign under your demands of course is a two-year contract with a 50 percent wage reduction and you will be a squad player the ball is now in roberto's court again with his entourage saying to the media, there is no interest from Barcelona. Sorry, not no interest, zero interest. It's not looking too good for Roberto. Of course, he's set to leave in the summer if he does not renew his contract. But there's no clubs, you know, being rumored interested in him at the moment. We heard, you know, Inter Milan last year, but nothing is picked up. We'll have to wait and see. Again, it is up to Roberto. He can stay at Barcelona for two more years, but he has to reduce his contract and he will be a squad player. But if he wants more money and a starting you know, role at a club, he's going to have to leave the club this summer. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, quick update on the Barcelona board, what they're doing right now, looking for a new CEO, possibly sign the new CBC deal, and also about our current debt. Firstly, coming in from Mundo Portivo, they come out saying that Barcelona are looking for a very financial profile with a lot of experience in economic management to replace Fernando Rivera as the CEO of the club. The Asha Aleman is 100% ruled out. He will continue as a sporting director. TV3 came out saying that Alex Barbani is emerging as a candidate to replace the new CEO of Barcelona. He was part of Juan Laporta's presidential candidacy and later became the chief revenue officer. Before Roberto's arrival, Barbani's name was already considered. So apparently, he could be coming in as that replacement. They're looking for, you know, an economic profile for that CEO position. Again, no rush right now. Fernando Roberto will stay in that position until they find their replacement. And also, apparently, when the replacement comes in, Fernando Roberto will also help out a bit. He does not want the main role, pretty much. He doesn't want to have his name as the CEO of Barcelona. He wants to focus on his, you know, family and other businesses that he owns himself. 
We'll wait and see, but again, the CEO search is still continuing. Now for a CBC deal update, Gold came out saying that Barcelona are confident of being able to close a benefit agreement with CBC. The club would want the 250 million euros injected as direct capital and not as a loan. Also, there is no limit to spending a maximum of 50% on signing. So again, the club is still talking with CBC to try to find an agreement. They want to find an agreement, but of course, similar to Roberto's contract renewal on the terms of Barcelona only. We'll wait and see. And remember, Fernando Roberto was, I think, with the CBC deal. He wants to sign to keep Messi. And now that he's gone, we are trying to now to renegotiate the CBC deal. Again, we'll have to wait and see what happens. And lastly, on the club's debt, Samuel Marsden and Moses Malores and ESPN came out saying that Barcelona's gross debt was around 1.4 billion last March, but a 500 million euro loan has helped to reestablish the overall long-term period. The wage bill has been reduced with a lot of players' exits and salary reductions of both Coutinho and Om Titi. So right now, the debt of the club is being managed. We have the loan coming in, of course, from Goldman Sachs and other resources as well. Players are leaving, players are reducing their wages. So slowly but surely, we are reducing the debt of Barcelona. Now, another resource to reduce the debt at Barcelona is, of course, agreeing to a new sponsorship deal, which again, is very, very likely and most likely, hopefully, in the next couple of days to be official to be Spotify. Now, firstly, Mundo Deportivo came out saying the proposal arrived in the 2014 assembly regarding the title race of the Camp Now is that the company name can only be added to the surname. Thus, Spotify Camp Now would go against the statue, but Camp Now Spotify would be fine. So apparently, in the 2014 assembly, the associates of the club voted against having the sponsorship name before the Camp Now. It has to be after. So it cannot be Spotify Camp Now. It has to be Camp Now Spotify, which again, I don't really care. It's for the money, but that rule is a bit interesting that they voted on that back in 2014. But again, it cannot be Spotify Camp Now. It has to be Camp Now Spotify. Juan Laporta came out talking before the match against Espanyol and he talked about the CBC deal. He came out saying that everything is going well. The agreement will be announced when we sign all the contracts with Spotify, but will have to be approved, of course, by the assembly first. We think it's the best option. It links us to music, which of course is a broad, you know, company in a broad industry. So again, he knows what he's doing. He knows this deal will be the best for Barcelona. Now, apparently the deal was supposed to be announced today, but unfortunately that will not be the case anymore. Gerard Romero came out saying that Barcelona will not announce the agreement with Spotify today. Both sides are still finishing up the contract and all the details are taken care of. Everything is under control. So again, we're still getting some bit of delays with this you know, announcement being official, but no worries at the moment. Spotify will become Barcelona's sponsor for next season for the men's team, the women's team, and also have their name in the title of the camp now. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is that the documentary for Barcelona Match Day is making its return. Fernando Polo from Mundo Deportivo, one of the best sources in Barcelona, has come out saying the second edition of Match Day, the documentary, will be released in April, so in like two months around Easter time, and consists of eight episodes. It will cover everything between Valverde being sacked and Xavi coming. So we're gonna get Setien appointed, 8-2, coronavirus pandemic, Coleman coming in, Messi borrow facts, Messi leaving, Griezmann leaving, Ansu Fati leaving, winning the Copa del Rey, getting embarrassed by PSG and Juventus. There's going to be a lot. I'm, am I excited to watch this? No, I'm gonna, but hell yeah, I'm going to watch it. But I'm not excited to see this whatsoever. It's going to be intense. We're going to see the behind the scenes. It could expose a lot of things, make more people look bad than they already do. And of course, it will include Juan Laporta becoming the president as well. It's going to be intense. Strap your seatbelts for it. I'm not looking forward to it, but again, we're all going to have to watch it. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like and of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discuss. The main thing I want to know firstly, Abel from Kese, most likely coming into Barcelona as a free agent and also as a Busquets replacement. What do you think about that? Secondly, on Erling Haaland, think it's still a possibility or not. Thirdly, in the full back position at left back, who would you go with? Marcos Alonso, Gaia, Fernando, Tagrifico, and lastly, on the exit and of course contract renewal of Sergio Roberto. I want your predictions down below. Will he stay or will he leave? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and force the Barca. Oh